Lately, a lot of American politics, and obviously the insurrection, have been fueled by damaging lies, with sometimes tragic consequences. Well, now some of the bills are actually coming due. While the government enforces criminal law and has indicted many people for the insurrection or other acts related to Trump's election lies, another round of battles are being waged in civil court. And there's some big victories, which is why this is such a top story right now. You may recall how Sandy Hook families won two multi-billion dollar cases against Alex Jones. And now there is a voting machine company that's using similar legal hardball to hit the Fox News company with a billion dollar suit that's all about alleged lies by Fox. And they're actually winning some of the initial skirmishes already over the process and how to get testimony and the facts, forcing Fox anchors to go under oath, including Tucker and Hannity. And now this week, and this is brand new, the biggest fish yet. I'm talking about one of the most powerful media executives in the world. Someone who actually decides what people in many different countries see. Someone who prime ministers and heads of state are afraid of. Rupert Murdoch has to go in under oath this week just like anybody else. And this is the Dominion voting machine case. They're waging this $1.6 billion defamation case. They think Murdoch's testimony could help them. And they allege these false claims that Dominion voting machines were rigged. The civil case is independent from the January 6th committee, which has formally ended. But this is a place where the committee's work and evidence lives on. Take Giuliani, one of the people who pushed those lies the farthest. But then, again, totally separate process, but quite relevant, he admitted under oath to the January 6th committee, quote, I do not think the machines stole the election. And then you have another high-powered rebuttal that could hurt Fox, which came from Trump's own attorney general. On the Dominion voting machines, and they were idiotic claims, and uh, I specifically raised the Dominion voting machines, which I found to be among the most uh, disturbing allegations, disturbing in the sense that I saw absolutely zero basis for the allegations. I thought, boy, if he really believes this stuff, he has, you know, lost contact with, uh, with uh, he, he's become detached from reality. To review... It was a lie. They knew it was a lie. And the top, top Trump people knew it was a lie at the time. And that looks pretty bad. So you might say, what's Fox's defense here? Are they going to still wage the war of the big lie and claim it was all true? You don't have to be a lawyer to know that would be a pretty tough road to climb. They're not exactly doing that. But you have to understand their side of the case as well. Fox argues that whatever was said, including things that obviously are false, they were in the strike zone of legitimate news coverage. And if there were lies, they want to blame them all on Team Trump. Here's the Fox position. Quote, there is nothing more newsworthy than covering the president of the U.S. and his lawyers making allegations of voter fraud. That's according to Fox. That's their side. But Dominion has a counter argument to that, saying Fox was definitely on notice. We told them. We told them in real time. Others told them, government officials told them, partisan government officials told them, people inside uh, the Trump administration told them, um, local election officials on both sides of the aisle told them, uh, this is not a matter of not knowing the truth. They knew the truth. They knew it, and they still lied about it for a reason, for some kind of political vendetta, actual malice, or other type of illicit reason. That's the argument you're hearing which is the required argument for these defamation cases. You may have heard me explain. They have a pretty high bar to be proved. You heard Fox's defense. Hey, if the president's saying it, we're going to do interviews. And then, of course, beyond interviews, the question is, did they have hosts like Janine Pirro, who went way beyond interviewing and seemed to be peddling these problems? This is a case that is bigger than whether or not Fox has to pay a fee. It's a case about whether lies and truth will be regulated differently at a time when the consequences sometimes involve actual assassination plots and people trying to storm the Capitol. Donald Trump and his legal team said repeatedly about Dominion voting machines, far-flung conspiracies with a deceased Venezuelan communist allegedly pulling the strings. I thought the Dominion stuff was... I never saw any evidence whatsoever to sustain those allegations. 
Testimony on the Dominion voting machine lies by Team Trump. That voting machine company suing Fox News and now scoring a procedural victory, forcing the powerful chief of the whole media company, Rupert Murdoch, to go under oath this week. I'm joined now by NPR media correspondent David Folkenflik, the author of Murdoch's World, The Last of the Old Media Empires, and a reporter who has been on this case. Uh, welcome, sir. Hey, good to join you, Ari. Uh, what might they get out of Rupert Murdoch to strengthen their case? Well, I think what they're looking to do is to get uh, Rupert Murdoch to concede that he knew, indeed, that these were untrue claims being made. These were baloney. There was no reason to give them any credence. And why would he be asked that? Well, you know, on that fateful day in November of 2020, when Fox called Arizona uh, for Joe Biden and not for Donald Trump, there's so much pushback from the Trump team, including from the then president. And Mur Rupert Murdoch reportedly said, no, we're going to stand by this call. It stands up. And if that's the case, then there's he's not in, even in the moment giving any credence to the idea that there was fraud that would have thrown the election. Right. And we're talking about something that actually matters a lot uh, that lawyers and journalists may think about more than, than say, everybody else. But there is a big difference between surfacing a range of ideas or hearing something for the purpose of debunking or fact checking it um, and hiding behind that method um, to confuse everything. I'll give you an example of another media outlet. I don't need to name them because my point isn't to take a jab, but they sent um, they sent uh, producers to Hawaii uh, in the 2000s, late 2000s, to fact check the birth certificate uh, racist conspiracy theory against Donald Trump and then say it wasn't true. And based on where that story was at that time, I think most fact-based people know that was BS. It was a way to surface the thing, not really debunk it. Um, where the does that distinction... Obama, sure. Yeah, where does that distinction fit into this case? Because uh, obviously, whatever the outlet, Fox and others, are going to have on presidents and lawyers and such... Um, but the allegation here seems to go further, and I'll read from your coverage of an example. You wrote about how a producer was warning behind the scenes Fox couldn't let Jeanine Pirro on the air. She's pulling conspiracy theories from dark corners of the web. That would seem to be, in your reporting, her doing it to give it to the audience, not her just interviewing a White House official. Right. I mean, there's obviously... Uh primetime hosts on Fox News and other uh, hosts for other shows are getting to choose with their producers and their executives what they put on the air, who they choose to amplify, whether or not they push back or, or fight back against some of these claims. And these uh, fraudulent claims against Dominion were often amplified, even egged on by Fox personalities, uh, occasionally a tiny bit of a skepticism injected in there. But, you know, Sean Hannity, t uh, according to Dominion's lawyers, uh, claims in open court in front of the judge in Delaware, said, I never believed it for a second, these claims against Dominion. And yet he and others hosted people on the air doing this. The question is, why does this matter? Well, legally, you know this better than I do. You're the lawyer. But legally, there's, uh, in terms of defamation case, they have to prove either that these claims were put on the air even as the journalists and the executives knew them to be false or that there was reckless disregard for the truth. And to me, lawyers would argue we've got them in both ways, that uh, there's a reckless yeah. disregard for the truth. Fox's own reporters, uh, reporters of the sister publications, the Wall Street Journal, were debunking all these uh, fraudulent claims of fraud in real time. And yeah. that... Uh, they should have known that and that there also was an active knowledge that is people behind right, the that scenes they're on the hook. What... Yep. That they're on the hook when they really knew. I'll do a lightning round with you. Yes or no. Uh, is Fox likely to settle? I think not. You might think that this would be a great time for them to do it, but they're about to go through these huge motions that are going to reveal yep. a lot. They Wait, that was yes or no, lawsuit. David. Sorry. That was I yes or no. Yes or no. Uh, is Rupert Murdoch good at depositions? Uh, I think he uh, he's good enough for what they're doing. He's going to deflect. He's going to not remember. He's going to mumble. And finally, your odds of who wins the case. Oh, I'm a smart enough man not to do that. Uh, I think okay. it's a fascinating and incredibly important case with a lot of implications on both sides. Answering like a lawyer, you know, good lawyers will never tell you they're going to win for you. They'll just say, we're going to do our level best to give you the best representation. They don't really guarantee anything, um, the and they're fact, paid for the it. Fact, David, go ahead. I was just going to say, the fact that they've gotten this far in this suit against such a powerful and such a 
wealthy institution with such billionaire owners tells you that there is a lot of fact behind this. Whether or not that gets them, uh, yep. their, you know, a win in court is a different question.